So, the Points of Miles game is an incredible game to play because it helps you achieve life-changing vacations for as little out of pocket as possible. But that game is also a little bit hard to play as just a solo player. And much like Super Mario Brothers, when they finally allowed us to have a two-player game, and much like the Points of Miles game, things got a lot easier and way more fun. So no, this video is not about how to get a girlfriend, but instead it's going to be about all the people out there who have a girlfriend, have a boyfriend, a husband, a wife, or even a third partner. And all the woes out there I see in comment sections and Reddit threads, etc. All to answer one simple question, which is... How do I convince my significant other to join the Points of Miles game? So in this video, I'm not going to tell you how, I'm just going to show you. And stick around to the end of the story because we're going to identify a moral at the end of it. And if you guess that moral before we get to the end of the story, comment it down below, of course. So the first out of two stories I have for this video is going to start in around 2019 or 2020. So during this time, I was around 21 years old and I hadn't had my first credit card yet. So I had no credit score, no credit card, and really... No life. And yes, we're going to get into convincing your girlfriend in just a second. And during this time, my then girlfriend also had a somewhat of a stigma, a little bit of a bias against credit cards because that means debt and that means irresponsibility, right? Which is for most people in the world. But I had been watching all these finance YouTubers over time telling you, oh, as long as you pay your balance in full, you're not going to be accruing debt and you could be responsible and use credit cards at the same time. So before talking about all the benefits that I learned from just watching these videos and not actually doing it myself and not artificially trying to convince my then girlfriend to get her own credit card because I know we're both going to need credit scores and credit cards for the future. No, I didn't do any of that. The first thing that I actually did was, well, I just signed up for a Capital One secured credit card. I put down a deposit of $49. They gave me a credit line of $200. And then we were off to the races. And no sooner than maybe three months from then, I was able to raise my credit score from around 550, 560 range all the way up to about maybe 640, 650 range. So it was very, very quick for me. And all I really did was just put a couple dollars here and there on the card every single month. Anytime I had to pay for anything, I put it in that card and I made sure to pay it off within just a few days after the charge would actually post. And during this time, my girlfriend saw an observer me doing it firsthand how I didn't accrue debt everything was paid off and my score was rising fairly rapidly and no sooner after that observation she said hmm it's working for him maybe I can do that myself and right after that thought hit boom she signed up for the same exact card I did followed the same trajectory and her score was a little higher at the beginning I'm jealous she started out around a 590 score and by the end of the three months she already had like mid 600s maybe a little higher and all of those biases that she had on credit cards prior to that moment completely faded away now remember we have two stories in this video that I'm about to get to in a second but what's the moral of this first story let me know down below what you think the moral of the first story is. Okay, the first moral is show, don't tell. If all you do is tell people to do things, well, one, most people are just not going to listen, and two, why should they listen to you in the first place if maybe three, you haven't done it yourself? And even if you have done it yourself and you still tell people to do things, and it is from your experience, still, you're going to get people who say, I'm not doing that, it still doesn't sit right with me. So in this example, I did first, got the card, she observed it, and said, in her own mind, maybe I could do that myself, then asked me how to do it, and I showed her. That's the best way. <laughs> That's the only way, really. So now for the second story. The second story of actually going from not just signing up for your first credit card, getting over those biases, but actually coming into the points of miles game where now you're signing up for annual fee cards for those points of miles, so this way you can use them on life-changing vacations going forward. That's... That's a tough pill to swallow for most people to start incurring fees every single year to open credit cards. In full disclosure, my wife currently today has 10 plus credit cards, which is probably more than some people watching this video. So the second story comes a little bit later. Maybe it's a year, maybe it's two years after just getting that first card for the first time. And now me personally, I'm now fully heavy into the points of miles game. At this point, I already have like an Amex gold card, an Amex green card. I also have some Hilton credit cards, etc. And at this time, we're pretty much working very, very often in and seeing each other at night with basically working six or seven days a week with no time for vacations. But there also came to a time where maybe we had a couple of days off and we decided to take a drive to Boston. More specifically, Salem during like Halloween time. This way we can kind of do some Salem witch trial tours and, and who knows all the crazy stuff that happens over there. And there was a particular hotel that I saw that was just outside of Salem. I think it was Warburn, Boston. And there was a Hilton there that I thought was very, very nice. The nicest Hilton I would have ever stayed in at that time. So I was looking through it. I looked at it and I said, huh, it has an on-site restaurant. It's like really close to where we want to be. And then I looked at the points price and I noticed it was like maybe 30,000 Hilton honors points 
per night. And remember what I said, I had just gotten Hilton credit cards. And the first Hilton credit card I ever got was the no annual fee Hilton card, and it gave me 150,000 Hilton honors points after spending just $1,000 in the first three months of opening that card. So I look again and I see 30,000 points per night, and we're only gonna be staying maybe two, maybe it was three nights, I forget. And then I said, huh, wait a second. I can completely pay for this hotel, nothing out of pocket, with only the points I got from this one credit card and still have like half left over, which was amazing in and of itself and very freeing for me, but it didn't fully hit until we actually got to the hotel. And I remember a specific moment when me and my wife walked into this, you know, fanciest Hilton that I've ever stayed at that time in Woburn, Boston. And I remember a specific moment when my wife and I both walked into this, you know, what I thought was the fanciest Hilton hotel in Woburn, Boston, Massachusetts at that time. And I remember looking around and it was like elevators and there was a pool inside and it was like really nice. And then I turned to my wife and I said, huh, we didn't pay any cash out of pocket. Like my bank account is not any less and we're able to stay here for two or three days. That's, that's kind of crazy, isn't it? And we had this kind of like aha moment, like, oh, there's something to this, okay? There's something to getting these credit cards for spend that you're going to be spending anyway, whether it's groceries, gas, just work-related stuff, who knows? Put it on these said credit cards, get those points of miles and use that as your travel fund for all your future vacations. And I think she had an aha moment there as well where she was looking at me like, huh, he's doing something. That's pretty cool. How can I help him, AKA us, do the same thing, but more often. And looking at our backgrounds, like this was amazing for us. Like literally I have more fingers the amount of times that I spent in hotels pretty much from the age of zero to 21 years old. Like we, we didn't go to hotels very often. And when we did, that was like an amazing trip. Like going to a garden inn, or roadway in at those times, <laughs> that was an amazing experience. And we both had very similar upbringings in that way. So you can imagine for people who grew up like this, like now being able to stay in fancy Hilton hotels and not having to pay any cash out of pocket, over the moon completely over the moon for us. And as time went on, I accumulated more and more cards and was able to take flights for free, was able to stay at like five-star hotels for free and occasionally getting like five-star dinners completely for free just with all of these perks and benefits we get with our credit cards. And what do you think happened after all of these experiences and her observing all the same things that she did just like when I got my first credit card? She got some credit cards. <laughs> <laughs> she got the Chase Sapphire Preferred. She got the Hilton credit cards for more hundreds of thousands of Hilton Honors points, the Hilton Surpass. She got Delta credit cards, her first business credit card, just about 10 different credit cards at this time. So going back to the title of this video, how did I convince my wife to completely join the Points of Miles game? Well, I didn't have to do anything at all. All I had to do, which is the second moral of the story, is to lead by example, which is fairly similar to the first moral, but the main point is, you need to do first so this way other people can follow. This is good of any leading position in the entire world. You should not ask of those to do things you are not willing to or have not already done yourself. And there was never a time where I had to sit her down and be like, okay, here are all the benefits. Here are all the cool things. Here are all the... She already saw it. <laughs> she saw everything that we were able to do through all of these amazing travels we were able to take for years and years without paying really anything out of pocket. Which reminds me of a podcast I did recently with Sean Lane when I asked him a very similar question on how to get your spouse interested in the Points of Miles game, and he said this. How long did it take her to get on board with the, the Points of Miles game? Still a lot of guys comment and say, man, how do I get my player two on board? You know, what's how'd you do it? <laughs> so first, let me say to anyone that is having trouble, it's tough to get someone on board to something if they don't see the results. Mm. So like if you if you take your player two to a true five-star hotel and you tell them it's paid for on points they'll probably change their mind very quickly <laughs> and get yeah. on board so that's the first thing my girlfriend is a very very nice person she was not very difficult at all to get on board i was kind of like as i was getting into this i was kind of like hey maybe you should get this card we could do these cool things with it and yeah. then she's like sure yeah why not and especially because i'm paying the annual fees as well i mean there's not really any kind of cost for her yes it's, it's a management cost because I, she still has to check her accounts, make sure they're yeah. all paid off and everything. And that, and, and sometimes I, you know, she has to call the bank. Sometimes it's going to be annoying, but when she's able to go to these truly luxurious places, Hawaii, Maldives, Mexico, all these like super, super nice hotels. What was she going to say? No, I don't want to go to these <laughs> hotels anymore. Like I'd yeah, rather right. pay cash. <laughs> so that's the, my biggest advice. If you haven't taken them somewhere yet, once you do that, and, it, it, and it's like a true, true luxury trip, 
they'll be way more likely to listen to you. Um, but in my case as well, I was just really lucky. She's a very chill person, very easy to get on board to the game. Didn't have even before I had taken her anywhere. It wasn't it wasn't really an issue. That's great. And very similar for me as well. Which is very, very true. I mean, more life-changing vacations usually equals good, right? It never really ends up bad. Unless you go to St. Augustine for New Year's, then that's a bad time. <laughs> and even at that point, if they still have incredible biases that cannot be broken, well, you have to respect that decision no matter what the outcome is. Because if you don't accept it, you don't tolerate it, you're just going to be building resentment for that person. And of course... This extends to many other areas in life. So respecting their decisions, respecting who they are, will lead to way less resentment and way more happiness down the road. And I get it. Sometimes you can only get off for one vacation every single year, but make that one vacation rememberable.